This post is for the people who have never joined a circle. If you've been thinking about it and you've been seeing the chatter plus the so and uh, sort of unfortunate news items, but you still feel you demand to join a circle, this is um, a post about how to strategize, right? Because you don't just go and join any circle, you have to pick the right circle, but also join the right way. Hi, first welcome to my new hood. Okay, I'm kidding. I am in an Airbnb in Cape Town. I am back to school after 13 years. Can you imagine that? I graduated my undergrad in 2006. And then I've kept procrastinating further studies until I finally couldn't do any more. And then of course last year I had a big 52 week challenge goal so that I could pay school fees which I met. So I'm down in Cape Town, I'm due to start school today and of course we record a vlog before we go to school. So this is my new hood, it's very very nice, uh, very well done and you know it's a um, loft which means it's a studio apartment which means it's a bed sitter. So I'm having these memories of my starting out when I first moved out of home. Anyway, the reason I want to record this short post is because we are in circle dividend season. If you follow me on Twitter, you know we have been celebrating yay, that circles are paying us our returns. My circle, which is Edition Circle Meru, former Malini Circle Meru, not connected to the Malini Circle that just uh, made a loss on a bank, declared a dividend of 10% on our savings. I am yet to go to collect my dividends because I'm down here, but you know, inside my heart, I'm just excited at the amount of money I find in the account. Yay! But this year, instead of all the other years where we just take the dividends and we eat and we rejoice, we are reinvesting our money because of the power of compound interest. If we eat our fruits, it means that we are compromising um, our wealth growing strategy, but when we reinvest it, then it earns more and it keeps multiplying. One day I'll do a post on the bad magic of compound interest. Circles are not very good if you're just planning to save and grow your savings. There are other, you know, better, less bureaucratic tools to do that. You can save in a money market fund, for example. The rate of returns are slightly lower than dividends, but they are, you know, they're good enough. You can buy government bonds, save and buy government bonds. Some of them pay even, even more than the 10% that my circle paid and they are more secure. But the only reason to join a circle is if you are saving with the intention to borrow money to invest or to borrow for you know, whatever reason, so, so, you know, it doesn't make sense to borrow for consumption. You'll see the video on debt. To start with, if you're not the kind of person who is comfortable around borrowing to invest or taking debt for the, the medium term, maybe the circle may not be good for you, may, may not be the right thing for you. But if you would like to grow your investments by borrowing from a circle, then first step is to, of course, strategize right. If you're joining to borrow, there's the issue of security. Most circles will allow other members to sign for you as your guarantors. Now, there are dangers to being a guarantor, and I did a post a while back about this on my blog, and I will link it, I'll put it on the description box. Now, the danger is that should you guarantee someone and they fail to pay, you lose your, your, your shares in the circle, so you lose financially. So, while I don't advise you to go guaranteeing people randomly, sometimes it may help if you join a circle with trusted friends. So, say you have an investment club with friends, you can together come, uh, band together and join one circle because already you have established a trust network uh, by yourselves. Secondly, you have other assets that you can use should one of you be unable to pay. The other hack uh, for joining a circle is to join with your mother. If your mother is formally employed, let's say she is a teacher or a nurse or a banker and they have a work circle, it may be advisable to join with her. The reason I say this is our parents really invest in building trust networks and they have relied on circles to educate us. So they have a network of guaranteeing each other and they don't let each other down. 
So you can join. I joined my mom's circle, which is a teacher's circle, but has opened up its membership to other people. And I found I am able to tap into her guarantor networks. They guarantee me, and then I also have to guarantee them sometimes. But they're teachers, and teachers kind of rock. So I don't mind that too much. The only thing here is to make sure that you know you have that commitment and that trust to repay when you borrow, because you don't want to let your mom down and her friends down. It really compromises her trust network. So that's one. The other way to deal with the security issue is if you have some assets that you can use uh, as collateral when you borrow. Most circles will allow you to bring your car. If you have a piece of land with a title, they'll allow you to use that as your guarantee against your borrowing. If you have some shares in the stock market or a government bond, they will allow you to use that as security. So I know it sounds in the chicken and egg. I want to join to invest, but I must have investments. So, you know, there's a balance there. But if you don't have investments, the other way is to build your credit by saving and borrowing against your savings. This only allows you to borrow a limited amount, not the three times. You can only borrow what you have saved. But maybe as you do that, you then be able to acquire assets and use them as security. But to be honest, what has worked for me and what I find easiest is to just have trusted people and guarantee each other and you borrow and you pay and it goes um, on and goes well. Now, so that's one. Second is to pick the right circle. If you've been following the news, you've seen you know a lot of drama around Ekeza circle. This is the one that uh, was doing real estate investments and they took off with people's money. Honestly, I don't know what the guy did, but it seems like he took the circle's money and used it to buy uh, properties at an inflated value. The second news item has been about the Malini circle and the investment in a bank that has made a huge loss. And then I think this week's Tima circle also made the news because of an investment they made. The question then begs, uh, is our money safe in circles? And that's where you have to pick a circle that has a strong governance system. Usually circles are managed by committees and the committee members are elected by the members of the circle and they're the ones who oversee the management. So you have to, one, consider whether the circle is regular AGMs. They are required to do that by law. Attend um, the AGM if you can as a member. You must always attend and participate in the elections. Usually, you know, as soon as you join, you're eligible to attend. So you can join just before ATM season, save maybe 1,000, 2,000 bob, and show up at the ATM and see how they conduct their affairs. Three, look at their books of accounts. Every member is entitled to books of accounts. If you don't know how to read financial statements, get an accounting friend to read them for you. And if you don't want to learn, and this is where I plug my day job, I work for Lantis Training. We have a very, very uh, simple simulation course that teaches people who are not finance people how to read and understand financial statements. Please, you know, you can sign up for that. It's only like 25,000 bob a day. And if you sign up through my blog, I will give you a discount because I am a trainer. So anyway, invest some time in learning how to read books of accounts. Look at the accounts, look at the capital, look at how the money is moving and make sure everything is kosher and that management are actually responding to questions that are being raised. As a rule, I avoid uh, circles that are very aggressive in terms of making investments. I like simple circles that just borrow and lend to members. You know, If a circle is doing, I don't know, a real estate project, I don't know, an estate in Tengela, I don't know what, I generally avoid that because I feel like you need specific expertise to do such investments, which most circle committee members do not have. So have a proper guarantor um, strategy, a proper investment strategy. Make sure the circle is strong financially. You know, find a way of finding this out before you join. If your friends are already members, they can send you the books. If not, you can join and when you have no savings, attend the ATM. Make sure the circle is not doing crazy, aggressive investments. Make sure they're keeping their things simple, which is borrowing and lending to members. And then once you become a member, what you want to do is bulk up your savings as quickly as possible. Some circles allow you to make a bulk deposit. That's what I did when I moved from my accountant circle, Mahasibu, to solution circle. I took what I had saved at Mahasibu and I transferred it to solution circle. And then they allowed me to build up that savings and borrow within six months. 
So once the six months uh, period had elapsed, I very quickly took my loan and I made um, an investment, which I will tell you about in a future post. And once you do that, then you get into that comfortable position that I like where you owe the circle more than it owes you and should anything go wrong, you will be more or less safe. Please remember that circles operate to a large extent through trust. If you borrow from a circle and you fail to repay, yeah, there are repercussions. You will lose your share capital, you lose your assets, or your guarantors will lose their share capital. But most importantly, you end up ruining a credit line that you will use for the rest of your life. The reason our parents were able to do so much with so little money is because they established that trust network and they maintained it for their entire lives. Our parents often, you know, for some of us, they didn't, didn't even earn enough to pay school fees, leave alone make investments. And what they do is they rely a lot on their circles and on that credit trust network they have built. So I would encourage you, it is a smart personal finance move to make sure you have cheap, trusted sources of credit. Now, in terms of how circles lend, a typical circle has different products. They have emergency loans they have, which have a one-year repayment period. They have what they call development loans, which have between three years and five years repayment period. And they have refinancing loans, which allow you to take your, say, your bank loan or other loans and get the circle to take, take it over and then you pay uh, the circle back. Make sure you look at all the products and make the right choice because sometimes not every product is cheap. You find emergency loans may have a higher interest rate. The normal development loan will come maybe at the standard 12%, which is the standard circle lending rate, which is much lower than the bank lending rate. And then the refinancing loan may come at a higher rate and so on and so forth. So make sure you pick the right product. Pick a tenure or a term that is as long as possible so that it gives you breathing space because you will need to keep saving even as you're repaying your loan. And then um, the other thing is when you borrow the money, please invest. Don't you know spend any of it because this is not your money. This is a loan. You've sort of borrowed against your savings. Make that investment and then keep repaying, keep saving, and when you get your dividends, put it all back. If you get extra cash, you can choose to prepare the loan to save on your interest. So with that, we come to the end of today's post. We have covered the basics in terms of how to be a good circle member. I will probably do another post uh, on how I um, have leveraged my circle membership so far and how I have done a couple of investments by borrowing money and then repaying it. So if you have any questions or comments, please hit me up in the comments box. If there's a topic you want me to cover, please, you know, again, reach out in the comments box or on my uh, Twitter page, which is in the description box. Until next time, be good and please subscribe to my content if you've not done so and share with your family and friends. Remember, we save together, we build wealth together. Until next time, goodbye.